Waldo, how dare you? I dare win. You? <laughs> how women are observing other women and the men that they're with. Women do not trust women. Inviting Anand into my vulnerability seems like a great antidote to my trauma responses. It is actually one of the best. Waldo, how dare you? <laughs> Anais, welcome to our Becoming a Better Woman series. Yes, I am daring because I believe both men and women need to improve, not just men. Mm -hmm. So I love it. you ask me to go back to a brunch we had together a few months ago with Anand, your lover. And um, I would love to, I'm curious, what did you want to discuss about it? Well, it's, it's really fun to process these things with you um, from your purview. And it's always great framing an opportunity for me to learn and grow. So I appreciate the opportunity to just revisit the story. Um, but if you recall, we were, we were having brunch outside on a, um, I think it was a summer day on a terrace and, um, we were pretty engrossed in conversation. Um, the three of us, you, me and Anand. And, um, at the time when we joined that, that brunch patio, we were alone or we were very, there weren't very many people there. And throughout the course of our hour or 90 minutes, um, I noticed that, more and more people kept joining on that patio and there were a lot of couples, um, male and female couples. And the seating, the seating arrangements were kind of getting tighter and tighter as they, they brought in more customers to this restaurant. And we were engrossed in conversation, especially you and Anand. And I started feeling a very, and I'll just, I mean, it's not my favorite word, but an insecurity inside of uh, being observed. Um, but not just me being observed, Anand being observed, you being observed, wondering if people were listening to our conversation, um, feeling like people were um, curious as to what we were talking about. Maybe they were titillated. I don't, I don't know. We could have been talking about anything, some very exciting things. Um, so but, you mean that the people that were at the terrace were observing us? Yeah, I can't remember exactly my position, but my position was enough to see that there were eyeballs looking at us. And there were eyeballs looking at Anand. And um, I must say, you know, I'm very attracted to Anand, my lover. Um, you know, I, I obviously um, cherish him. And I... I think he always looks deliciously sexy. And so I was like, ooh, are these women who are, you know, on this terrace with their other male companions observing my um, my hot lover? And or are they also wondering um, what we're talking about? And um, also, you know, it's just, I mean, this just goes way deep on a genetic level, but like you wonder, like in an environment like that, are people um, biologically um, looking for the most strong, powerful man in 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 the in the in the in the in the, uh, in the pool? Does that make sense? And so, so it yeah, it does make sense. And I'm going to say, but, you know, it does make sense because, you know, people could see us. Anand is, you know, six foot three, very sexy. I totally agree. Strong. He's a and, very strong person. Oh, I yeah. agree. And yeah. I'm assuming that he was the same as me, that he was only looking at you. You know, <laughs> as men, we can totally focus on the object of our attention. Mm -hmm. And I know how dearly he loves you. So mm -hmm. I don't think he was searching for any of the Definitely other women. He was not. He was not. <laughs> and and exactly. Was he was not. And that's, that's why it's so wonderful to, to talk this through with you. Because clearly... Um, this was something happening inside me or inside the feminine essence. And I, I know energetically I did cue into something that was um, 
pooling from the other feminine on that terrace. And, um, and I don't think that you nor Anand picked up on it be as because you're men and you live in the masculine. And so it's this very interesting conversation you and I have had many times about the differences between the feminine and the masculine. And, wow. um, and I energetically felt that. And part of that is very much obviously tied to my personal experiences in life. You know, my, my tra trauma from childhood that still gets, you know, brought up from time to time. And I wouldn't, um, I, I don't, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm looking at the world through my lens, you know, and, you know, my lens is, is just the, the experience that I've had, right? So that's also a bias. It's our, also inherently in my, how I experience things in the world. But there is this thing about it that it, that is, it also feels very feminine and very much about how women are observing other women and the men that they're with. And, um, yeah, I, I, that was a triggering moment for me on that patio that day. Um, what else can I say? I totally get it. And so would you qualify and I'm daring here <laughs> to say that these eyeballs were somehow the toxic feminine somehow trying to steal your man? I mean, I think on a deep genetic or biological level, there's a part of me that felt that way. Yes, I, I, I would be silly to deny it. But on a rational, you know, level, no, the answer is no. So this, this is rational. <laughs> rational does not apply in those situations. Right. So the key here is that women do not trust men and men do not understand women and women do not trust women yeah and so that's the so that's confirming my toxic feminine assertion <laughs> yeah right. i very, win <laughs> <I'm very> good. <laughs> no. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, we could call it a love triangle, right? It's really, really interesting. Um, and so right. I want to qualify here. Yeah. The love triangle is not with me. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's women and women and, and, and their men. And um, it's really, really interesting. Um, and I think, um, you know... I think about this word so frequently and I, I bring it up to Anand a lot, but for me, um, and the longevity of our relationship has thrived because of his ability to provide me reassurance. And the first time I used that word with Anand, um, and explained my need with the word reassurance, he got it. He understood it. He had a sense of clarity. He said, wow, if it's reassurance that you need, I would be delighted to give you reassurance frequently. Um, that is something that he can offer me um, to create security. But it is really interesting to me that the feminine requires this reassurance. And it's, I think, a vulnerability for the feminine. So don't blame yourself here because this is really interesting. You know, when men get married, they say, I do once, and that's good enough for a lifetime. True. However, women, women need that reinsurance, mm -hmm. you know, minute by minute. Mm -hmm. And so in the, that situation, I was clueless, and I'm learning a lot. Did Anon provide you reassurance during that hour, hour and a half we were having brunch? I'm sure he grabbed my hand or something, you know, so I, but he was so engaged in the conversation that he actually yeah. wasn't focused on me or what was happening in the periphery. Right. I mean, in his defense, I mean, we were having a great conversation and he was engaged in that he was, his presence was on the conversation, which is a very masculine behavior. The one thing that he was, you know, really attentive to was that conversation. At me and my feminine was able to be in the presence of the conversation as well as the observer of what's happening around us. And um, so 
Um, I Again, I don't feel like he did anything wrong. He might have even grabbed my hand at some point. I don't recall. Uh, but again, what was happening inside of me, this, this, this conversation is about this, this interesting internal storm that, that, that. Yeah, happened. exactly. And so if Anand had specifically addressed it, like, Hey, darling, I am noticing more and more people are joining behind you. Is that disturbing you? Are you still with me? Do you sense I'm still with you? Do you sense that you're still the only one for me? Oh my if he God. had said that. <laughs> I mean, that would have been amazing. Um, yeah. How could, but I, I don't expect that of Anand. I mean, so I, I disagree with you. And this is the place <laughs> where I'm daring again is I believe men should claim their woman every minute because it makes a big difference for the woman that's beautiful well he does claim yeah. me but maybe i could have cued him i mean maybe in hindsight if we were going to revisit this moment maybe i could have said wow this um this terrace is getting full of people and i i feel a lot of eyeballs on us right now and um i would so appreciate some reassurance right now that you that i'm your your primary focal point or, or something to that effect I, d I don't know um maybe that would have been beneficial and it would have prompted him so what the masculine loves the most in the feminine is the feminine expression with no blame and no request. And so you telling Anand, hey, my love, I need reassurance right now. I feel insecure mm. is wonderful. Mm. That's great. That and so, so just imagine how, I'm just going to say most, I'm daring <laughs> because very few women in my view, can do that. But imagine most women would storm, would blaming from having a wandering eye, would blame him for looking at the waitress when she comes in to deliver the meal, would, you know what I'm talking about. Sure, sure. Yeah. So your being vulnerable with your insecurity is a gift to him. Mm. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I, I, um, that is um, something that I'm still learning, you know, as, as I fall into deep connection and security with Anand. Um, and it has gotten better over time. And, um, he oh. has done a great job of providing reassurance and, and being focused on me and, and letting me know that. But I learning to vocalize my vulnerability is a really beautiful yeah. um, gift of um, invitation. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so the triggers that you have felt are going to happen again and again and again, whatever the situation is, because that is just human. Mm -hmm. And your relationship with Anand, which is a very conscious relationship compared to most couples, is creating a wonderful place to work on these and slowly but surely rewire your brain, create mm -hmm. new neural pathways in yes. which you learn to trust him more and more. No, that's... That's really wonderful. And, and I've noticed yeah. that change. Yeah, I've noticed that change. And um, yeah, inviting Anand into my vulnerability seems like a great yeah. antidote to my trauma responses or triggers. It is actually one of the best. <laughs> that's, that's phenomenal because it, 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 it actually serves both of us. Yeah, yeah. And so the trick here is to not project or blame him. Mm -hmm. This is not about him. This is just you feeling insecure. Completely, completely agree. Yeah. Yes.
And so when you can do that, and I'm not talking about you right now, but I'm more talking to the women listening. Yes. When you can share your longing without projections, without blaming, then the man feels honored. And then he can really show up as the superhero that he is, but he cannot show up as otherwise. And then from his masculine, he finds the solution to the longing or to the insecurity that you have. And in this case, telling, hey, darling, I know there are more people that have shown up in the last 10 minutes. Um, are you OK? You know, you still, you know, you still mm -hmm. mine and I'm claiming you. I have only my eyes on you, you know, and Valdo once in a while when he talks <laughs> and the way and the waitress when she brings food. But this is more about the food than, it, than anything else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I um, it really creates balance, I think, um, between the masculine and the feminine when we can step into um, our energy, our, our feminine or masculine energy and, and own, own that a moment, that feeling and, and, um, and share it and um, in vulnerability, um, in truth. And, yeah. um, and so I'm going to be very uh, vulnerable here is I am trained to notice those things and I did not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, but this is really interesting yeah. because mm -hmm. the idea is that the one of the best gifts from a masculine to his feminine partner is to basically provide that claim, that reassurance. Mm -hmm. And one of the next best one is to basically sense when she needs something and then provide it because that's the best gift ever. But sure. like here, even though I'm trained, I didn't <laughs> notice it. And so if that is the case, which is very often because women notice way, way, way more things than men due to their, you know, diffuse attention, mm -hmm. then the best gift that a woman can offer is offer that gift of vulnerability. Mm, totally agree. It's a beautiful yeah. reminder. And this is a really great example of that. And, um, and I appreciate you because in the moment um, when we left the brunch, you know, I shared my vulnerability with you. Anand had to go on to, to work and um, you were very helpful. You know, when I brought it to your attention and I shared with you what, what had come up inside of me, what I had felt, um, you were, you were, we were shocked. You were like, wow, I didn't, I didn't observe or sense any of that. You were totally shocked. And wow you were very, very helpful based on your experience. So I appreciated it then and I still appreciate it. And so what feels like as a recap mm -hmm. is for men with a masculine essence and not an I, honor our masculine, for you honor your feminine and then finding ways to honor each other more and more, which mm -hmm. I'm daring again here, which means being aware of toxic feminine that often we have no clue. You know, competition between women is something that men don't even care about. You know, yeah. men think women dress and apply makeup for men. They <laughs> don't even know that women do that for other women most of the time because of that competition. Yes, yes, that's, that's so true. So 100% true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for daring um, being on camera with that story and the lessons. And I cannot wait to continue our friendship. If this video inspired you to liberate more love through more trust and understanding between men and women, please hit the like button below and subscribe so you can be notified when I publish new juicy content. And please share with all you believe 
would benefit. I look forward to seeing you very soon.